everyone. My name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream on Twitch weekdays from 5 p.m. Pacific time in the US, 10 a.m. in Australia and 1 a.m. in the UK. I hope you guys are well. Uh, I do want to shout out a thank you to Galen and Kiori for hosting my channel. I do appreciate that guys, so thank you very much. Uh, do check out their channels as well guys. There are other 3D artists that stream on Twitch. And uh, so yeah, go check out their channel as well when they're streaming. So thank you guys again for hosting my uh, Twitch channel. Um, <laughs> let's start by I think talking about what we're working on. We're creating an Art Deco building interior and exterior uh, in Unreal Engine 4.15.1. Now this is a building I created back in 2011 in UDK, which is Unreal Engine version 3. So six years ago I made this building. I, this is a short video that um, shows you exactly what the building is. It's just some concept art I created for it. So we're going to be recreating this building in the new version of the Unreal Engine. So we're, we're going to, we're, what we're doing is we're taking the assets I used when I made this one in UDK. We're updating it for the uh, new version of the engine. I'm changing some of the textures because some of the textures I don't like uh, that I created for the original version. Uh, we're making a couple of the assets a little higher polygon because graphics cards have gotten a lot more powerful since this was made. Uh, and I'm interested to see the changes that Epic Games have made to the lighting in the engine. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be recreating this building in Unreal Engine 4 and uh, seeing what the changes are. Once we've um, rebuilt the building in Unreal Engine, we're going to create a cinematic like this, like you see here, where we fly through the building. Um, I did, uh, one change I will be making to this new version of this building is I'm going to be placing it in a, a, an actual landscape environment. So with some vegetation, trees, that type of thing. Whereas this version was just created sitting on a flat checkerboard plane. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see what the lighting changes are like between this version, which was version 3 in UDK, and the new version, which is version 4 uh, of the Epic Games Unreal Engine. So what we're doing uh, to start with, though, is we're taking our assets from 3D Studio Max into uh, the Unreal Engine one by one, updating them as we need to update them, uh, bringing them into the Unreal Engine. Once we're finished bringing all of our assets in, we're going to be rebuilding this building in the Unreal Ed Editor and creating the cinematic. So again, this is just for the benefit of anyone that may be new to the channel and wondering what I'm working on. I'm working on this Art Deco building that you see here. Then this one, though, remember, was done six years ago in UDK and we're redoing it now in uh, Unreal Engine 4. So that's what we are going to be working on. And again, you see it's just a checkerboard floor here that this building was sitting on. We'll place it in an actual environment with some vegetation to make it look a bit more interesting before we create our cinematic. So yesterday we were working in un uh, bringing some of our assets from Max into Unreal. So this is the building we are going to be working with. We haven't brought this building into Unreal yet because I want to make a few changes to it. I want to um, make some of the, add, add more three-dimensionality to the, some, parts, some parts of the building and I want to redo the tiles on the roof because I really don't like that texture. Um, I also want to regrow some of the ivy. But what we've been doing, on, doing is working on these assets and we lay them out in a row like this so that um, we can see what, what the different assets are that we have to um, update and bring into Unreal for the interior. And the ones in the background here are the ones we've already done and the ones in the foreground are the ones we still need to do. And the reason I lay them out in a, a row like this is so it's easy for me then to see exactly what I need to bring into the engine before we start rebuilding it in Unreal. Uh, yesterday we brought in a few assets and we were working on um, creating blueprints for some of these gate pieces, door pieces, uh, background door pieces. So what we do is we bring our assets in, I uh, duplicate parts of the same mesh so that we can cut down on our poly counts and, and uh, texture sizes. And then I rebuild it in the editor and create a blueprint from that 
that we can easily then drag into the uh, editor as we need to start building our building. So, uh, and I call them prefabs, they're blueprints, but I underscore them prefabs so that um, it's a good visual reminder to me that they're made up of many different mesh pieces. And that's what we were doing yesterday. So we have our, our side doors and our front doors. This is the uh, railing section that separates the upper floor from the lower floor above the stairwell. Our Art Deco doors and uh, our wrought iron uh, decorative gate. There's three of these inside of that building. Um, and apart from that, we were just bringing in some other columns and pieces yesterday that we were working on. Let's give the uh, engine a minute there to load in the texture. Uh, we have our light fittings. We've got two of them in. We've still got to bring in one more, which is the main deco chandelier. So a ceiling light. Uh, different bits and pieces like these are the air intakes that go on the side of the building. What else do we have? These are some of the decorative um, archwork that goes inside of the building. And again, these were textured up in Substance Painter, where we just added a bit of wearing and weathering to the sides of the uh, wood, just to make it look a bit more interesting. We did the same sort of thing here with these uh, railing sections, where we just added a bit of weathering and wearing to the wood here on the edges. Again, just to make the uh, asset look a bit more interesting. And that was all done in Substance Painter. Uh, regulars to my channel know I like to use uh, Mari by the Foundry to do most of my texturing. That's my preferred paint program, 3D paint program. But Substance Painter is perfectly fine to use as well, and I, I do use it. And it's really good for assets like this where you're working with um, physically based materials. Whereas uh, Mari is more for painting by hand textures, which I, I really like doing. As an artist, I like doing my texturing by hand. But like I said, they're both great programs. Uh, they're both useful in different ways. And I use both. So <laughs> remember, guys, if you do have any questions, please feel free to pop into chat and ask me. Um, a little background on myself. I work in architectural visualization um, for a studio here. Um, I've worked in games development in the past for game studios. And I've also worked in film and cinema. Um, I've been in 3D for more than 10 years. So if you have a question, please feel free to pop into chat and ask me. Uh, if you just want to pop in and say hello, that's always welcome. If you just want to watch, that's completely fine as well. I don't always want to talk to the person streaming when I'm watching somebody on Twitch, so that's cool. Let's jump back into Max. Let's choose another asset from our front row here that we want to bring into the uh, editor. Now again, things like this, this curtain texture is fine. I'm going to be reusing that, but this curtain texture I really hate. I don't know what I was thinking when I um, chose that texture and, and created that texture. It's just awful. And so I'm going to be swapping that out at some stage as well. You see that this uh, curtain actually has these tasseled pieces on the side. That's really just a flat plane with an alpha map. And that's just a shear that sits behind the actual uh, main curtains here. So let's have a look at our assets. There's a couple here that we can bring in relatively quickly because um, we don't need to do much to them. Although, I'm just going to isolate this for a moment. And I'm going to do this so that the rest of the geometry doesn't get in the way and distract me. This piece is a piece that sits between, uh, it, it sits in a doorway. So we're, the door would close on top of this piece here. And that separates two rooms. It's just a nice decorative piece that you can place inside of a level. Let's have a look at that video once more quickly. I think we can see it uh, in part of the fly through. Let me just fast forward through here. Oh, we're not going to see it there. I think we see it when we get up to the second floor. So yeah, that, that was that square railing piece that we saw in, in the editor just before. that separates the lower from the upper floor. We still have to uh, redo our chandeliers here, our deco chandeliers. But I think we're coming up to that piece that we're going to work on now. It's, yeah, just here. You see this... Um, metal piece here it sits between the two rooms under the in the door frame 
it's just a nice decorative way to separate two two different rooms. So it's a, a nice deco design, and uh, it looks really good in the uh, building. When, and you place them up basically under it, in, in between every door. So we're going to be doing that. I think we might work on that. Um, now again, this is just a flat plane. Uh, all this decorative work is just placed on a very flat plane. And again, that, that was suitable for UDK because we were more worried about texture sizes than our polygon counts back then. But we can probably get away with uh, upping this a bit. Now, there's a few ways I can do this. I, you could do this with a normal map. A normal map will work. But bear in mind with a normal map, if you're looking at an object side on like this in silhouette, Normal mapping is faking depth, so whenever you look in silhouette like this, you're never going to see any depth with a normal map. Parallax mapping can uh, fake that for you to some degree as well. Parallax mapping though is only really good for certain objects, brickwork, stonework, that type of thing. Um, it doesn't work for everything. And like I said, a normal map, when looking at it in silhouette like this, you're not going to get any depth information. Uh, so, and because we're doing our cinematic where we fly through the building, I just think it might be more interesting to actually add a bit of depth to this. I'm um, just trying to work out whether it's worth it or not. It's a small asset. Mm. May not be worth doing it. One way you could do this is to actually add geometry where this uh, decorative pattern is, which is what I've done for the, some of the uh, light fittings. You saw me, guys that were, saw me working on my light fittings saw me actually creating uh, 3D geometry for the metal part, the iron part of the uh, light fitting. Um, they're seen a lot more. This being on the ground and being so small probably won't be seen very much. I don't know if it's actually going to be worth us actually modeling, detailing into it or not. Let's jump into the top viewport and have a look at this. Um, oh, it's an iffy one, this one. Um, it could look good. We could get some really interesting light shining across the surface of it if we have some actual three-dimensionality to the, to the mesh. Um, Let's just ignore this piece for the moment. So I, I'm really in two minds as to whether I, I will do that or not. It's going to go out of isolation mode and we'll look at some of the other pieces that we have to work with first, I think. We still have to do our main stairwell. And again, this uh, carpet texture I'm using here, I'm going to probably end up replacing, I think. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this texture, but um, I just think to make the, the new version of that building look a bit more interesting, as opposed to having a blue, uh, a green and a red or a burgundy might look nice going up as, as far as the carpet color goes going up that stairwell. So we'll look at that soon. And I also think what I'm going to end up doing is placing metallic, um, what would you call them? The metallic strips that run in the very corners of the uh, stairwell. If you, if you look at anyone that has a runner going up a stair, they generally have these metallic um, strips and basically what they do is they fasten the carpet into the corner of the stair and they'd look really nice I think uh, if we put some of those in as well so we'll probably end up doing that for the stairwell but before we tackle that let's just have a look at our other assets here we were doing some column work yesterday and this uh, detailing for the ceiling we may finish that up with there's really only one more of those wooden columns that needs to be uh, fixed so we may do that I think because that should be done pretty quickly uh, I also want to swap out that uh, this square at the bottom because that circular piece is all faked on a texture it's just a flat map and I don't want that I want more three-dimensionality there as well but what we can um, cannibalize that from one that we've already created here for the uh, stairs uh, for the railing section in the corners here. Let's start by doing that I think. Let's um, zoom in a bit here on our railing section. 
I'm going to jump into my modify tab. I go into sub object mode and I'm going to select that piece here in the corner. And this is a this serves two purposes. It makes it so that we don't have to recreate a lot of geometry. We can reuse what we've already done. Uh, and also it keeps consistency through the look of our different um, furniture pieces. Again, remember guys, when I was doing the garden terrace, I said to you, don't try and mix up too many different textures on your models. It'll look odd and strange and unrealistic. Uh, and to try and keep consistency in the look. And the same thing goes here. We're gonna, we want to try and make sure all of these different um, furniture pieces all look like they blend and match and mix together properly. And if we start changing textures too much or colors too much, they're not going to look uh, right. They're not going to blend and mesh together properly. So we've selected that little corner piece. I'm going to um, open up my detach here and I'm going to detach as a clone because I don't want to remove it from where it already is here. All right, so now we should have a separate piece if I can get it to select. There we go. I'm just going to also go into my hierarchy and um, center my pivot to that piece. So we have this um, duplicate we've created now that we can use on that other column. So let's pull that over, pull it forward, oh, and pull it down. And I'm just going to bring it over near this other column. And we can select both of those and go into isolation mode so we can uh, get a better idea of what we're doing here. Jump into our top viewport. Now I'm going to rotate this piece around because I don't want it on a 45 degree angle. I've got angle snap turned on to make it easier. I'm actually going to turn angle snap off because it's not rotating at a complete 90 degree angle. So. I'll do it by hand. That should be good. Zoom out a bit. And we'll pull it up near the uh, column we want to attach it to. Gonna find it in this side viewport here. There we go. Um, okay, now again, when we created this, we only created that decorative piece here at the very front because these three side pieces are going to be hidden under the floor of that square cutout railing section. Uh, so we're going to have to uh, copy that. We're going to have to add some detailing to that because this column has that decorative piece in all all the way around the actual column itself. And this column sits uh, above the main stairwell on either side, so you are going to see all around the column. So we will fix that up right now. So again, I'm going to go into um, I was going to say I'll go into isolation mode, but we may be able to work with it like this. It's going to rotate this around. Again, I'm going to jump into my modify tab and go into sub object mode. And let's select these pieces here that we want to copy. So these are dark chocolate wood pieces, the gold inner and the chocolate wood background and that piece down the bottom. All right. Again, we're going to go into our detach and we're going to detach as a clone because we don't want to remove the one that's already there. Select those pieces. We'll jump into our top view because it'll make working a little easier. Uh, again, I'm going to center my pivot to the object. And I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. And we're going to move it out to the opposite side. I'm going to jump into my uh, orthographic here so I can see exactly what's going on. All right, I'm just going to pull it in until the um, piece looks the same as the opposite side. 
and I can judge that here by the width that I see just there on that piece so I know it has to come forward a bit more to about there We may pull it forward just a little bit more. No, it looks like we may have come too far forward, so we're going to take it back a little bit again. That looks good. Okay, with that selected, let's jump back into our top viewport. Hold down the Shift key if you're using 3D Studio Max and shift drag a copy make sure it's a copy not an instance then we're going to rotate this one 90 degrees oh. we'll position it and move it forward And now again, for anyone new to the channel, you see me moving my mouse here around quite a lot to get to different buttons. And I prefer to do it this way to show you guys what I'm doing when I'm doing it. I do have macros set up on my mouse to buttons to actually automatically select these different things for me. And uh, if you're working, that's probably a great way to go. Um, but I found that if you're trying to learn 3D, it really gets confusing if um, I'm using a lot of macros. So I like to, I prefer to actually move my mouse to show you what I'm hitting when I'm doing what I'm doing. It just makes it easier for you guys to follow along. But by all means, don't think that uh, using macros is bad, it's great. And I do use them myself when I'm not streaming. Let's pull this one back in. I see. Now, some guys that were... <laughs> if you guys were watching when I created this asset last time, and brought it into Substance Painter. You remember I forgot to include this um, square here. I've done the same thing again. And that's again my bad. I think it's going to be easier for me as opposed to just trying to move this. There's like a square piece that sits behind this uh, circle, this tube, which I have forgotten to include. So instead of me just pulling that in and bringing it around, because I've only created two of these anyway, I'm just going to remove these two that we've just placed. And again, I, like I said, I did the exact same thing last time when I was painting it out. I forgot to include that piece. So we're going to do that now. Uh, again, I'm going to go into sub-object mode. We're going to select those pieces. And remember to include this back piece now. This is the piece I forgot. Again, we're going to... Um, Detach as a clone. Select that clone we just made. Come on, Max. Come on, Max. Max can be very, very temperamental sometimes. Uh, I could select it through my uh, browser here, but you see I have a lot of objects in my scene, so it's going to make it a little bit more difficult for me to select it correctly. See if it's this one. Okay. All right, we've made a clone of that. So again, we're going to um, make sure our pivot is in the middle. Rotate it 180 degrees. And move it to the opposite side. Make sure it's positioned correctly. There, like that. Jump into our top viewport. Again, I'm going to hold down the shift key and shift to drag a copy. Rotate it 90 degrees. And we'll move it to the front. And again, we're going to make sure it's lined up correctly. Alright, so we just need one more around the back. 
So again, shift drag a copy and rotate it this time 180 degrees. Get into position to make sure it's uh, correct. And we'll pull it in just a little bit, I think. All right, so now we have our corner uh, base piece here with, which has all of our decorative pieces all around the outside. And again, if you see here, this is a low res texture, the original, with just using a flat plane. And uh, we've um, increased our poly count here slightly by actually adding 3D geometry to that decorative piece at the bottom. But before we do anything, let's attach those pieces together that we just copied. So I'm going to go into my Modify tab here and make sure I'm in Edit Poly mode. I'm going to attach these different pieces together. And I know when, if I move my mouse over the piece and my cursor doesn't change to a little uh, plus sign like that, that uh, I've selected all my pieces. And we can double check that just by moving the asset and if nothing's left behind we know we've got everything. Okay, let's get the size correct now I think. So I'm going to pull this over. We'll go into our scale tool. And we're going to scale it uniformly. going to pull it in and I want to scale it so the height is the same height as this um, column piece here. So we need to come down just a little bit. And that should be good. Just so long as it's roughly the same size, it doesn't have to be exactly the same size, although it pretty much is. Right. I'm just going to be moving it into the position here where the other one, the old one is. Okay, now I'm going to um, select the original column. Again, go into sub-object mode. See if we can select the base, okay. So we have our old base piece here selected. I'm going to uh, delete that. Uh, the one at the top will be okay. There's no decorative pieces there. And uh, what do we do with this? Um, I, uh, we may actually add some three-dimensionality to the actual uh, sides of the column as well. Again, this is a flat plane and I want to, um, by adding some more 3D geometry to the actual column, when it's lit, it'll, add, it'll look much more interesting in the, in the uh, actual level. So we'll do that. I think. Let's jump into our front viewport here. I'm going to go out of shaded mode so that and use uh, constant colors. It'll just make it easier for us to see what's going on. All right, let's see what, what we're doing here. We're going to create like a frame around the uh, edge here. So I'm going to pull back until I can see most of my column in my viewport. Oh, we will. Jump into box mode and we're going to create a box that's the same width as the column. And the same height as the column piece. Now again this box will have been created at, uh, back at uh, zero position in max so we're gonna probably have to pull it forward. I'm just gonna zoom out until I can find it. There it is. And we'll pull it forward here. I don't want it to be that thick so I'm gonna jump into my modified tab and pull back a bit on the uh, height. Jump into my orthographic and just see how high that is. I still think that's a bit too high, so we're going to pull it back again. Pull about about there. Okay, let's jump back into our front viewport. 
I'm going to turn on edged faces. Now let's start working with our um, edge loops here, our segments. So I want my width segment to be at 3. And my length segment to be at 2. So we have 2 running down the length and 2 running along the width. Edge loops that is. Let's go down and edit poly. Now I could have collapsed my box into an edit poly, but doing it this way, if we make a mistake with our edit poly, we can uh, just remove it and we're back to our original box here. We'll go into edge mode. I'm going to select one of these edges and I'm looping it. And I want to pull it out to further to the edge here to until uh, it gives me about the width of that uh, sort of frame that I want to create. I'm going to pull it over until it's about there. I'm using these textured pieces here at the top as a guide as to how wide I want them to be. Um, we're going to select this edge and we're going to loop that as well. And we'll pull this one over to match the other side. Select this edge and um, we'll loop it. And we'll pull it up. And then the final one here, which we're going to loop and we're going to pull down towards the base. Around about there. Uh, now we're going to go into face mode. I'm going to select the uh, face here in the middle and delete it. Select the back face as well and delete it. Now that's fine, except that what that has done is it's left our, um, let's go into our orthographic here. It's um, not created a, an edge along that interior side. It's hard to see here because I, I'm not in, I'll go into shaded mode, it may be easier. No, it's not, okay. Basically there's no, um, it, it's not bridged here, that's hollow. We, we can't have that, so. What we can do is we can select uh, our um, our border mode here, which will select all of our edges on the back and the front. And we should be able to bridge them. Just like that. So now they're all connected up. We won't get any problems with light leakage and that type of thing. That's all well and good, but um, I don't ever like a really hard edge, particularly on a large object like this column. So we're going to um, soften up the edges on this outer piece here. Not the inner piece in the background because you're never going to see it, just the outer piece. So, I'm just going to deselect these edges here on the inside edge. that one and the one on the opposite side uh, that one so we only have the edge here on the inside selected but all the way around we've got it selected we're going to throw down a uh, chamfer modifier and again you can actually in an edit poly there is a chamfer command but throwing down a modifier it, this is a newer version in Max than the one that's built into Edit Poly, so it, it's always better to use the actual modifier. I'm going to pull back on that a bit. I'm also going to pull back on the tension a little bit here. I'm going to up my segments to three. That'll just give me a softer curve to that. Uh, to that chamfer that we're doing. And I know it's a little difficult to see here in the viewport, but it's uh, smoothing off that edge there. Maybe about there like that. I might pull back the tension just a little bit more. Not too much because that'll take it away completely. We just want a little bit.
Okay, let's collapse our stack here. We're going to select the uh, outer edge as well. So I'm going to go back into edge mode. Select these uh, outer edges. Uh, I won't, mm, I will. I was going to say I won't select the base, but I will. We'll do them all. I do have to make sure I select all of those outer edges though. Um, now I just know where the geometry is, but you'll see that it can be a bit difficult to select your edge because you can't see it. So you can turn on uh, edge mode here as well. That'll just allow you to see more easily where that edge is. And it shows up the, uh, the chamfer we did here on that inner section as well a bit better. Okay. I'm also going to do these uh, actual bottom edges here on the corners as well, but not the back edge that hit that butts up against the back of the column. Oh, so we need that one there and that one there. I'm going to turn edged faces off now because I don't need to see my edges. And we're going to do the same thing again now. We're going to throw down a chamfer modifier. We're going to go to three segments. Pull back a bit here on the, um, on the amount. And pull back a little bit on the tension just to, again, soften up the edge. And you can see it best here in that corner. And that should be good for what we want, so we can collapse our stack again. Alright, let's pull this piece back to actually touch the column. A bit like that be good for what we want I think. I do want to make sure it is actually inside the column and not sitting out above it too much otherwise we're going to get light leakage happening in, bit in the background there. And uh, it looks like the top view here is probably the easiest one for us to look at. So like that I would get light leakage because it's not actually touching the back edge here. So I want to make sure I pull it in until it is actually just inside that back edge. Okay, let's jump into our front viewport. And I just want to pull it down a little bit because it's not quite long enough. So I'm going to go into um, vertex mode here, select my vert. I'm just going to pull them down. Just until it touches that top edge there of the base square. Okay. All right, now before we start uh, duplicating that around the four sides of the column, let's texture it up. We are going to change the color of this texture as well, but for the moment we can use, reuse the same texture. I'm just going to jump into my material editor here. Let's grab a quick sip of coffee. I'm going to... So I wonder, I think this is that texture that we already used and did some color correction on. I'm just going to check that by um, viewing that image. I think it is. Let me just select that texture here that we're using. I'm going to make sure that it is the same. It is, okay. So what we can do is 